This is not about you being Indian or not Indian. It's incredible, incredible, I'm telling you. So Hindu is essentially, which today the educated population in the country are completely missing. This is the only culture on the planet without a religion of its own. Nobody in the planet, no human being is interested in God, please understand this. Well, there's only one God, for that how many problems? <laughs> it's an incredible thing, nowhere else on the planet there is such a phenomena happening, nowhere else such a thing has happened. I'm not saying this being biased that I'm born in India, so I have to boo-boo-boo. In this culture, we have never had one authority to spread spiritual process. Because this is the only culture on the planet without a religion of its own. So Hindu is essentially that culture which was born out of the river Indus is called Hindu. So it's a geographical and cultural identity, never was a religious identity. It's only when people came from outside, who came with concretized ideas of religion, they had to give you also one name. So we are this, what are you? We are all over the place. They couldn't understand that, you must be something. In the same place, a million things existed together. In the same house, if you are a family of five, five of you can worship five different gods and I have absolutely no problem about it. <laughs> we didn't even think it's a problem till people came from outside and told you our god and your god. Till then we did not even think it's a problem. You could be worshipping this god right here, I could be worshipping that god right there, another could be sitting with eyes closed, another could be singing, another could be dancing, but we still thought it's all okay, everybody can do their thing. So there has never been a religion in this land. We have thirty-three million gods and goddesses. That happened when our population was thirty-three million. Now we are 1.2 billion, but we lost our creativity. <laughs> yes. Because outside forces came, particularly Western forces came and they started making, a feel, ma making us feel ashamed of our gods. Too many gods. Well, there's only one god, as if it's a superior idea. If you can create one, why can't you create a million? You have not seen your one god, right? If you can create one, why can't you create a million or a billion? It's just a question of creativity, isn't it? So does it mean to say nothing beyond me exists? That would be a stupid way to conclude. As you sit here, you know you did not create yourself, yes or no? Can you digest your food or digestion happens? It happens. Are you breathing or breathing happening? Are you beating your heart or is it beating? I can go on to your liver and kidney and everything, even to the spleen. Even the tiniest thing in your body, you're not running it, isn't it? It is happening. Are you spinning the planet or is it spinning by itself? You're doing nothing. Doing nothing, dead, just tidbits, everything vital is just being done, yes or no? Everything that's vital to life is being done. You just have to sit here and just enjoy the spin. <laughs> For that, how many problems <laughs> So, this is a land which clearly understood God is our making. That's the reason why in this culture God is not the goal. Mukti is the goal, liberation is the goal, ultimate freedom is the goal, God is never the goal. 
Yes or no? You don't like it because you've forgotten. <laughs> Otherwise, mukti… mukti is the goal, isn't it? Mukti means what? Liberation, freedom from everything, including God. You are using God as a stepping stone if you need it. You can grow with God or without God. This is the only culture on the planet where in any of our Indian languages, there is no word for a heretic. Because we never thought anybody is a heretic. We never imagined that there can be somebody like that. Because we did not have any established belief system, everybody can do their own thing. Most plural and democratic process for thousands of years. So, the spiritual movements were started for human liberation. This is not about God. Nobody in the planet, no human being is interested in God, please understand this. People are interested in God because they believe he's a solution for their life, isn't it? Yes or no? You think if you go to God, all your problems will go away, your health problem will go away, your mental problem will go away, wife and husband problem will go away, you… you can pass an examination without studying, you can… you can succeed in business without working, so many things, incredible things. But it's about you, isn't it? Yes or no? It's about you. So when it's about you, we were straightforward enough to address it straight. We said, this is about our liberation, this is about our well-being, this is about our ultimate well-being, not just immediate well-being. So this is a culture which looked at it this way. So it is a complex array of spiritual movements. Many have died, unfortunately. In the yogic system it says, when… when somebody asks Adi Yogi, how many paths can be there? He says, if you use your system and go, there are only one hundred and twelve. But if you go beyond your system, how many atoms are there in the universe? That many doorways are there. So we gave the freedom to create your own God. There is something called as Ishta Devata. You can choose your God. If you don't like any, you can create one. Yes, you suddenly like the tree in your house, you can start worshipping. Nobody in this country will think it's funny or weird. Anywhere else if you do it, you will be… they would be burnt alive but now they will throw stones at them across the fence because they think you're a heretic, you're worshipping a tree. You like a stone in your garden, you can start worshipping that. Nobody thinks anything odd about it, it's perfectly fine. Because there is not a single atom in the existence without the hand of the creator in it. Every cell in your body is doing complex activity, not because of you, isn't it? The source of creation is functioning through that. Every atom, all this complex moment of proton, neutron, electron happening, you doing it? The hand of the creator is very much in it, so every atom is a doorway to the beyond. Because of this, so many varieties of spiritual moments happened. It's unfortunate so many have died in the last hundred years, so many. But still the variety is fantastic. If you… how many of you been to place like, places like Kumbh Mela and things like that? You been to Kumbh Mela? The big one that happened in Allahabad, have you been to that? Hundred and… after hundred and forty-four years, it comes. If you go and see there, you must go, you will see India, okay? An India of another dimension, which today the educated population in the country are completely missing. It's incredible, incredible, I'm telling you. People are putting their last penny and traveling from somewhere, just to be there for two days and go. I'm saying it's that level of people where hundred rupees would mean like what a million would mean to you, that's how much a hundred rupees will mean. 
That kind of people putting everything that they have, they come with their families just to be there because somebody has told them on that day if you take a dip you will attain mukti. Not that you'll see God, not that God will come and give you a heap of gold, you will attain mukti. Still eight hundred million people in this country are actively seeking liberation knowingly or unknowingly. It's an incredible thing, nowhere else on the planet there is such a phenomena happening that there are human beings longing to go beyond their present level of existence consciously. Nowhere else such a thing has happened. When Mark Twain visited India, he spent uh, two and a half to three months in India. Th there's a book about his travels. Along the equator, he traveled around the world. So, uh, he said, anything that can ever be done, either by man or God has been done in this land. This is one of the best compliments India has ever received. And that is so. In terms of understanding the mechanics of how a human being is made and what we can do about this, nowhere else has anybody looked at it with the profoundness that it has been looked at it in this culture, nowhere else. I'm not saying this being biased that I'm born in India, so I have to boo-boo-boo. This is not about you being Indian or not Indian. This is about a profoundness of knowledge which is gone awry, you know, lost its tracks or losing its tracks slowly. Unless we put it back on the right thing, humanity will lose something tremendous because Today we know how to call on the phone and talk to somebody in America, but we do not know how to communicate with this one yet. Our communication technology, information technology has hit the ceiling, but what information do you have about the nature of your own existence? Nothing. We know how to do many things, we can go to the moon, but you don't know how to simply be here. So, this technology of inner well-being has been explored with as… you know, absolute profoundness. This knowledge should not be lost. Only if this knowledge flourishes on this planet, material and economic well-being will translate into human well-being. Otherwise, you will have everything and you will have nothing. So when people achieve economic well-being, human well-being also should happen. If this has to happen without an element of spiritual dimension in them, it cannot happen. They may be following an organized spiritual process or by themselves they might have found something, but without an element of spiritual process, there is no way anybody can translate economic well-being into human well-being. This must happen. As economic development happens, it is very important parallelly spiritual possibilities are widely available to every human being, otherwise life will deceive you in such a bitter way.